these cattle that I purchased. Well, well I'll be per I'll be writing the final check tomorrow, but they are going to be here at 9 a.m., 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. So these 50 Black Angus heifers that I uh, I got, they're on the way. They, that I have uh, uh, sourced are on their way to me. They'll be here tomorrow morning at 9 to 10 a.m. This morning, I was at the fertilizer plant picking up fertilizer. So uh, I had a lot of time to think this morning because while I was at the fertilizer plant, uh, the, the belt on, on the auger went bad. And so the auger stopped working. It took about an hour for them to get that belt fixed, maybe even an hour and a half to get up there and get that belt fixed. So I sat there just uh, thinking thinking about what kind of fertilizer I'm gonna put on my grass and all that kind of stuff. And I asked myself a question this morning. So I asked myself a question. The question that I asked myself was, if I were going to offer a fertilizer recipe for a majority of people, what would I say, you know, they should do with their field, right? And so when I thought about that question, the, okay, so my big reason for, for not offering people straightforward answers, it's not like I'm just going to tell somebody, hey, uh, put this fertilizer on your grass and you're going to make uh, $100,000 in six months like me and, and you're going to be, uh, you're, you know, you're going to be something special. Oh my God, you found the easy way to do it. There is zero such thing as an easy, as an easy way to do this. I mean, if I hadn't done this for so long, if I don't, if I didn't do this as intensely as I do, I would not have made money the way I did. You know, uh, me, uh, me, you know, me making a hundred thousand dollars in six months running commercial cattle. I, I am not the, I am not the normal, right? Okay, so the average, so the, uh, the concept of average, right? Well, the concept of average is if I put everybody on a graph. Let's say I was going to put everybody. Who ran uh who ran cattle on 10 acres right let's say i was going to put everybody on cat everybody who ran cattle on 10 acres on a graph for how much money they make a year right like uh everybody would practically if it was an xy graph like this everybody would practically be in one area everybody would practically be in one area and that is what is called average like uh the, the concept of average i think a lot of people get that misunderstood and it's not like an even spread. It's not like 10% of the population is a one. It's not like 10% of the population is a two, 10% is a three, 10% is a four. It's like 99, 95% of the population is a, is, is in between a four and a half and a five and a half. And then about 5% of the population is either from a one to a four or a six to a 10. And so getting out of that average is very, very difficult. I mean, you're either way on one end you're way on the other end or so you're somewhere in the middle almost all the time for anything for anything it doesn't just have to be money it could be for uh you know uh you know uh, it could be for anything any anything right everybody is practically between a four and a half and a five and a half for everything and so to get on one end or the other it's it's a very it's uh well i mean you know there are things happen that you know uh, like one of my big things is that if someone is handicapped like they should be taken care of for you know if, if someone is born with like a legitimate like a legitimate disability a severe disability and stuff like that that causes them to fall out of the average they should be taken care of for you know like if they are uh severely uh like if they're severely retarded right or severely mentally handicapped they should be uh, someone should there should be uh, things in place in society that take care of them. You know, if someone is born without arms and legs, you know, well, I mean, they, they got prosthetics for things like that nowadays. But, uh, you know, like if somebody has, you know, uh, like Down syndrome, right? You shouldn't make fun of them for having Down syndrome. Like, you know, people shouldn't be going around making fun of people with Down syndrome and stuff like that. They should be, uh, they, they, they should be, uh, you know, uh, uh, allowed to live a, a meaningful life and or not allowed i'm not gonna say the word allowed because that sounds kind of uh it makes me kind of sound like a uh, it, it's not it's not it's not it's not exactly what i mean you know you shouldn't make fun of people with down syndrome and stuff like that right i mean that's just that's just that's just my belief and uh but you know while i was sitting there at the fertilizer plant and i was thinking about these things 
I came up with an idea of if I were going to tell somebody, you know, this is the fertilizer that you should put on your grass. This is what I would suggest. I would suggest that, okay, so I would suggest that if I was going to grow a grass, I would put something like a 717 NPK fertilizer on the field. And there should be about 30 pounds of calcium and about 15 pounds of sulfur on your field as well. And so what that would look like is uh, is about a, uh, if I were going to put a, so let's say I was on a field and I didn't and I didn't know anything. I didn't know what I was doing. I would I would look to put about 70 pounds of nitrogen, 10 pounds of, of, of phosphorus and 10 pounds of potassium, maybe even 20 pounds of phosphorus depending on the field and 70 pounds of potassium and 40 pounds of calcium, 30 pounds of calcium, 30 to 40 pounds of calcium and about 20, uh, 20 to 25 pounds of sulfur. That is what I would suggest as a, if I really didn't know what I was doing and I, uh, I just wanted to try something, uh, you know, uh, you know, like fertilizing a field with 70 pounds of nitrogen, 10, 20 pounds of, of phosphorus, 70 pounds of potassium, and uh, you know, 30, 40 pounds of calcium and, 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 and 20, 25 pounds of sulfur is only gonna cost like 600 bucks. You know, it, it really does not put you in, in, at any risk of any sort of like severe financial, uh, like severe financial, you know, problems. You know, if you got five, $600 and you really wanna try something, that is what I would suggest. Put about, if, if you're gonna grow grass, that is what I would suggest. Do about 70 pounds of, of, of nitrogen, 10, 20 pounds of phosphorus, 70 pounds of potassium, do about 30, 40 pounds of calcium, and then do about, uh, and okay, so the thing about calcium is I would only add calcium to the soil if my pH was below a seven. And so like my field right now, it has a 7.5 pH. And, and, and if you go on the internet and look up something on Google called soil web, S-O-I-L-W-E-B, like a spider web, soil web, one word on Google, it'll come up with this app and you can type in your address or your GPS location and it will tell you the character, characteristics of your soil. It will tell you the pH of your soil. It will tell you the consistency of your soil. It will tell you if you have a clay loam soil. It will tell you if you have a sandy soil. It'll tell you all that stuff. And so you can go on the internet, look up the pH of your soil, and if the pH of your soil is below a 7, I would apply calcium. Uh, if it's like a 6.7, I would apply calcium. If it's a 6.5, I would apply calcium. Uh, pH is, is a logarithmic scale, so every every point that I move down from a... From a so if I go from a 7 to a 6, it's like exponentially more acidic. It's not like a... It's not just a little bit more acidic, it's exponentially more acidic. And so if I legitimately just wanted to try something and i was in like a and and i just and i just didn't it was my first time really doing something and i didn't know what i was doing that is what i would suggest i would suggest those fertilizer ratios and because here is the reason okay is because if you consider okay so like when i look at my field i run many saturation graphs in my head at the same time so a saturation graph would be like an xy graph and if i applied a certain fertilizer the application of the fertilizer would increase the metabolic activity in the plant which i would be able to record because the biomass of the plant would increase and so if i apply nitrogen there would be a graph for nitrogen if i applied phosphorus there would be a graph for phosphorus if i applied potassium there would be a graph of potassium if i applied calcium sulfur magnesium manganese copper selenium etc etc right all of that stuff would have a different saturation graph and and saturation graph just means that it goes up like this and eventually the graph saturates it goes sideways so if i apply more fertilizer there is not much uh, difference in the biomass accumulation of the plant and then at a certain point the fertilizer concentration will get so high that it will actually cause negative biomass accumulation in the plant which just means that the that the uh, the, the level of minerals in the soil have become toxic to the plant and it is causing the plant to die and if you apply a seven like a, and so so if i applied somewhere between a, about 70 pounds of nitrogen you, you're not really at risk practically 99 percent of the world if you applied 70 pounds of nitrogen 10 pounds of phosphorus 10 pounds of potassium uh, uh 10 or excuse me 10 to 20 pounds of phosphorus and 70 pounds of potassium so a seven seven one about seven one or seven two seven seven one seven or seven two seven and then you had if you had a soil pH that was under a seven, you applied about uh, 30 pounds of calcium and uh, about a, uh, 
and for all but just about all soils if you just about apply to 15 to 20 pounds of phosphorus or excuse me a sulfur you wouldn't really run into any issues with your your soil becoming toxic to the plant you wouldn't ever really run into any problems where the uh, the mineral concentrations in the soil are so are so high that it causes negative biomass accumulation where you cause toxic uh toxicity issues in your plants and so if you were to run all of the graphs at, in unison like me when i you know me when i run when i run uh when i run fertilizer data when i look to, when i look at my field and i and i consider what what type of fertilizer i should apply I consider every, I, I consider as much as I can. I consider the, the nitrogen, I consider the phosphorus, I consider the potassium, I consider the sulfur. I consider it all in unison. But if I if I wasn't able to do that, let's say like I'm, I'm I, I you know, cause it took me a long time to learn how to do this. I mean, it took me like 15 years and I had to work like seven days a week to, to learn how to do this. And so, you know, but if, 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 if I wasn't at that level yet and I still wanted to do something that would produce somewhat of a positive return, on my grass you know you're not going to make a hundred thousand dollars a year or you're not going to make probably not even a hundred thousand a year and you're definitely not going to make a hundred thousand dollars in six months growing grass like this what what i'm describing what i am describing right now is for the very 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 basic level people if you're a very 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 basic level farmer and you don't know what you're doing chances are if you apply a 717 and a, and a 40 a 30 to 40 pounds of calcium depending on your ph and and 20 to 25 pounds of sulfur on your field chances are you will be somewhere on the upswing somewhere along the graph you will be you you will be doing substantially better than having done nothing and because okay so the reason that i i would suggest doing uh applying fertilizer at these ratios is because plants metabolize uh minerals in unison right plants don't just metabolize nitrogen they don't just metabolize phosphorus they don't just metabolize potassium they don't just metabolize calcium they don't just metabolize sulfur they metabolize it all at once and so when when you consider the uh, the idea like that so when i was thinking when i was sitting in my truck and they were fixing the belt this is what i ultimately came up with uh if you consider that the plant metabolizes all of the uh, the, the all of the minerals at once the plant is is obtaining the the minerals in the environment at a ratio it's not just one at a time it is at a ratio and so if i were to you know uh, like go on google right now and i were to look up uh, you know uh, the uh if you really wanted to get specific and you really wanted to do something that was closer to my level like you wanted to go on an intermediate level instead of you know because uh i would say for the beginner if you wanted to do something that was at a beginner level you could do that you could apply to 717 with the calcium sulfur ratios depending on your ph but if you wanted to do something that was more on an intermediate level you could get on google get on google scholar and look up the cultivar of grass that you were trying to grow and then look up and find data on on the uh the the uh some of the best data that i have personally been able to find is that they, they'll uh they'll they'll run grass They'll grow grass, they'll grow different cultivars of grass in, in agar blocks. So they'll have a gelatin blocks that they impregnate with, uh, with, with, mineral, with mineral ratios. And they will grow different uh, cultivars of grass in these gelatin blocks. But there are also, uh, um, you know, there, there are a lot of trials that they do. You know, uh, you, know you can find papers on uh, like, uh, if you really wanted to do something at an intermediate level, you could do stuff like this. So you, you could go on Google Scholar, like th this is some of the stuff that I do. At my level, this is some of the stuff that I do. I would go on Google Scholar and I would look up the cultivar of grass and then I would look up uh, uh, trials that were done uh, that, that were to essentially uh, collect saturation data on the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the biomass accumulation of the plant according to different fertilizer applications. So one, one, one study may say, oh, we applied uh, 50 pounds of, of nitrogen. One study may say we applied 100. One study may say we applied uh, uh, 75, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can find them for all sorts of stuff, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, calcium. You can find it for all that stuff. And then you could, uh, you could formulate a, uh, a fertilizer plan according to what you find on the internet and that would be more of like an intermediate level farmer so if i was going to be an intermediate level farmer and i wanted to do something that was a little bit more challenging that is what i would do and then at the uh at the extreme end at the at the at the expert end like what i do is is i do things in real time i walk my field i look for broadleaf plants because broadleaf plants tend to accumulate biomass more uh, more, more rapidly 
And so nutrient deficiencies are easier to spot in broadleaf plants, but broadleaf plants, they have a different uh, mineral requirement than something like a grass. And so you gotta, you gotta account for that too. Broadleaf plants, they probably do more of like a 517 uh, instead of a 717. And so you need to consider that. Um, but like me, I do things in real time. I don't just, uh, I don't just bake up a plan while we're sitting on a table and then and then go for it. Me, I, I I do things in real time. That that's the expert level. Like when you get to my level and you're able to make a hundred thousand dollars in six months, farming ten acres. I mean, this is this is the reality of the situation, right? I do things in real time. I walk my field and I look at my grass and I say, okay, so I put fifty pounds of nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, potassium on my soil. I put a, I put a 20 pounds of sulfur on my soil. I have uh, four inches of rain on it. Uh, here next week, I'll probably get another inch of rain, but my but my weather is going to be cloudy, severely cloudy for about five days. I may actually get a second rain event over the next uh, over the next week. My saturation graph looks like this, and so what kind of fertilizer do I want to put on my field that would still keep me that that would boost the production in my in my crop? Because if I have if I have an opportunity to increase the metabolic activity in my in, in my field for one week these are the small things that make big differences like if i can increase the okay because okay i know that there's a lot going on but if i'm going to really let y'all know what it's like to be a, a a a high 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 level farmer that makes a lot of money this is this is this is the reality of my situation okay so if i plants grow proportionately so if i have a plant that is that has accumulated an uh, a certain amount of biomass and it grows 10 percent the next day it will grow 10 percent on top of the 10 percent that it grew the day before so if you think about it like that let's say i'm getting 10 percent more growth out of my plant every single day 10 percent more growth out of my plant every single day over 10 days my plant will have accumulated twice as much biomass as it would have if, if I didn't get the 10% extra accumulation a day. So because the, 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 the growth of a plant, it compounds. Plants, they grow consistently. It's not like every single day there's a new plant. It's like every single day that plant that is growing today is growing from where, where it got yesterday. And so if I have a plant that is growing at 90% and I have a plant that is growing at 100% and there's a 10% difference on a daily basis, after 10 days, that plant that is growing 10% more will have accumulated twice as much biomass. And so, you know, the 10% when you when you want to get the, the, uh, the expert level and the intermediate level, it may not seem like there's a lot of a difference, but th there is a drastic difference in the results. Uh, the results that an expert level farmer gets and, and an intermediate level farmer gets is drastic. The the uh, the the amount of difference, the the amount, the results in an intermediate farmer and a beginner level farmer, they're not that drastic. I mean, if you're an intermediate level farmer and you go against a a a, a basic a, a beginner level farmer chances are you're not going to have significantly 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 better results i mean you may make an extra hundred dollars an acre like oh my god you know i grew 220 bushels of corn when that farmer who didn't know what he was doing grew 180 right but then at that expert level it's like man i run six seven eight nine ten cattle an acre i make a hundred thousand dollars every six months you know that that is the difference that is the difference between being an intermediate level farmer and being an expert level farmer and so, you know, that the 10% the really matters. The 10% is where is where the men and the boys are separated. Because if I can get 10% more growth out of my grass a day, every 10 days my grass will have grown twice as much as as the field that's not getting as much growth. And so at the expert level, you got to be able to do things in real time. You got to be able to walk over a field and say, "Okay, now is the time that I want like when I when I apply fertilizer to my field this this time, I'm going to apply a a 24-pound nitrogen a uh, five pound phosphorus, uh, 15 pound potassium, uh, seven pound sulfur fertilizer to my field and I'm gonna apply 200 pounds of it. So I am actually going up to about uh, about five, about 50 pounds of nitrogen. I'm increasing my fertilizer dosages just because I know that uh, 
I'm not really, you know, my, my grass, the last time I fertilized it, I put 50 pounds of NPK on it and 20 pounds of sulfur, and it got four inches of rain on it, and my grass has been growing at, at, for two weeks on it, and my grass is planted at a very high density. I have almost 200 pounds of seed per acre, so my grass is metabolizing a lot of fertilizer, and so I'm not worried at all. So let's say that they've used about half of the fertilizer that I put on it, so now I'm sitting on about 25 pounds of NPK and about 10 pounds of sulfur, if I apply 50 pounds of N, uh, 50 pounds of nitrogen to that 10 pounds of uh, of nitrogen reserve in the soil, I'm not at any risk of of, of chemically uh, damaging my soil or causing negative growth in my plants. I'm not I'm not at any risk of doing that, and so. Uh, I am increasing the fertilizer concentrations in my soil just because I see an opportunity to really push the biomass accumulation on my field over the next week because I am getting a lot of rain and the weather is turning cold. Like uh, if you go on the internet right now, I mean, it's it's this simple. I mean, you can literally get a super high level education for free instantaneously on the internet. Like if you go on the internet right now and you look up just simply at what temperature does winter wheat die it will tell you at 92 degrees fahrenheit winter wheat the enzymatic activity of winter wheat is, is lowered significantly and so at 92 degrees uh or, or they're damaged uh, they're, they're damaged at 92 degrees and so like if i went on the internet right now i could find out okay at 92 degrees fahrenheit my winter wheat is probably not going to be growing as well you know up to about 82 degrees fahrenheit uh, winter wheat has ha at 82 degrees fahrenheit winter wheat has maximum metabolic activity and so if I anticipate that my that my field is going to get an inch and a half to two inches of rain over the next week and it's going to stay cloudy over five days and my temperature is going to hover around maximum metabolic activity uh, activity uh, in the maximum act, uh, metabolic activity range of winter wheat. You know, this is the time that I can really push the biomass accumulation of my plant, right? This is my opportunity to do so. And, and you know, uh, you know, uh, with 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 this these fertilizer levels, if I get another rain event in two to three weeks that 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 puts at least one inch of rain on my field, that would be that would I, I would also have an I can uh, I can apply fertilizer again at that point. So it's not like uh, this is my only chance to apply fertilizer. You know, here in about, uh, I would say it's going to rain next week and probably within two or three weeks it'll rain again. And when it rains again, I, I can I can go out on my field, take a look at my grass and I can I can collect more data and I can I can decide what kind of fertilizer I would like to do, uh, what kind of fertilizer plant I would like to make, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a lot that goes on. I can't just sit here and, and you know, um, I can't just... I can't just show somebody, I can't teach somebody how, how to do, you know, how to farm in one in one video. I can't even uh, teach people how to farm. If I made videos for the rest of my life, I probably still couldn't teach people how to farm just because if you actually want to learn how to farm, you're going to have to get out there and you're going to have to do it yourself. And so, you know, and, and you know, uh, you know, the reason that I don't give uh, straightforward answers to people like do this, do this, do this. Is because somebody, I guarantee it, somebody is going to go, you know, I don't want to put myself in a situation where somebody said, oh my God, this guy said I should do this, you know, and I'm going to do it exactly what the way he said it. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to put everything that I have on the line, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go and I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, take loans from the bank and I'm going to, you know, whatever, whatever. And, you know, uh, I'm just going to do exactly, and I'm just going to copy and place, paste this idea, and then they're going to go out and they're going to try it, and, you know, they're going to make, you know, uh, you know, uh, $5,000 a year, and they're going to be miserable, and, and you know, you know, or worse, they're going to lose everything, right? I mean, they're, 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 they're somewhere along the way, they're going to mess it up, and then their, their grass is not going to grow right, and all, all this, and so... I don't want to put myself in a situation where I, you know, uh, I, I give someone a straightforward answer, they copy and paste it, and then they somehow mess it up, or, you know, there was something that may be minor that I did not account for, et cetera, et cetera, and it turns out to be a horrible idea, et cetera, et cetera, but I would say for about 95% plus of people, you know, if, you, if you're a beginner level farmer, it's probably a good place to start. You really only put yourself at risk for about $600. And you, uh, you could go and farm 10 acres, and and you could uh, you can uh, you can get some kind of a, of a good result, but chances are, you know, uh, the the you know it, it you know I know that it may be a horrible thing to say, but it's the reality of the world is that you know a beginner level and an intermediate level farmer they're probably going to be in about the same area, but an expert level farmer and an intermediate level farmer or an expert level farmer and a, and a beginner level farmer are going to be drastically different, and usually the difference. One easy way to show one one easy way to see the difference is in is in how much money they make, right? 
like me, you know, if, if everybody could make a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars a year running commercial cattle on 10 acres, they would do it. They would do it. I mean, who wouldn't do it, right? And so, you know, I mean, even at the intermediate level, probably not going to be able to make even close to as much money but at the intermediate level you should be able to make about thirty five thousand dollars a year farming 10 acres i mean uh you should you should be able to i mean i you know i mean it's not it's not possible for me to save everybody right i mean a lot of these things they need to be learned at an individual level and it's going to take a lot of trial and error and it takes a lot of practice it takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of time but that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.